Hello and welcome to TJR. We have a special, special episode today. That's not John Boy's voice. Shut up, comments. It's Poppy and Trev. The show everyone's kind of been asking for. Producer BBD in the corner. Zach just walked in, so now there's lead in everybody's pencil. Trevor Plouffe, how are you, my friend? Jacob, big, big dong and chat. What's up, guys? I don't know if anybody's asked for this. I'm, yes. I'm not so sure of that, but it doesn't matter if you ask. You're going to get it. Yeah. Uh, my Wednesday's a leisure day for me. Yeah. It's a leisure day, but you, you gave me the call. People know I'm built different, Jake. I'm a workaholic. You're not the same. How you doing? You're not the same. I'm I'm doing well, man, Trev. I just popped out the chat. The excitement in there is unreal. Mm. Uh, John Boy is doing some family stuff today. Uh, he will be back tuned in uh, very soon as we build up for the playoff run. I'm doing well, Trev. Uh you mocked my outfit. Uh, I think at some point during the show, I'll post my well dressed Wednesday. Um, I look fantastic. Uh, it was a little bit of. I didn't get a well dressed Wednesday outfit, so I had to scramble. Today was the first morning chill in NYC. I think it was the mm. first morning there was a five on the scoreboard mm. to start. A little bit of that crispness. Yes, that. That autumnal air. So, you know, I put a pair of denims on. Uh, They look a little slim fit now that the month of September wasn't so good to me uh, dietary-wise. And, yeah, this – so I've had this blue – so I drew the duck blue. I had this blue shirt for a while, uh, and I've never really had a good chance to wear it because I never wear pants, and it's a shirt that kind of has to be worn with pants. And whenever I do wear pants, it's recently been my light jeans, and I can't... These are light jean. So if I go full light jean, it's kind of gone. Uh, so, yeah, I, I look good today, and I've been getting critiqued pretty hard for it. I don't like that. I've been trying to think about, like, what what's that outfit? What Where is it usually worn? Who's wearing it? And I think I figured it out. Okay. That shirt is exclusively for family pictures you know like that one where you look like a thumb like you you wear (laughs) that shirt we're gonna start there you wear that shirt for a family picture that you're like man like why are we all dressing the same again we're going thumb off the rip okay okay Uh, you pull it off though i think i told you earlier that you just kind of look like someone that's miserable with their job yes i mean this is Know what this is? This is Thursday vibes at a miserable job. This is, mm. we're going to happy hour. You know, I, I'm going to tell the waitress I'm single and she's not going to care. Um, Man, yeah, the chat's going in. The, a little bar mitzvah vibes. Visiting the grandparents. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Like, you know, you can't you can't go to grandma's with the hoodie on. You gotta put on a shirt. Um so yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh I'm sorry I'm a little bit of a sex symbol. Shaved. Um, you guys know nothing about that. Dude, Trev. Yes. I I've got a couple things I need to tell you. Um and JJR's, we're going to have a draft. We're going to do some weird news segments. We got one that Trev's really juiced up for. Um, Trev, I want to do a little bit, some short memory lane stuff. First, let me get this in. Uh, memory lane by Jake is brought to you by Magic Spoon. Mm. Um, we love Magic Spoon. It's not a joke. Um, John Boy has signed up. I'm a little nervous to sign up because I love it too much. Um, so I, I just, when they send us stuff, I like just stealing it then. And that's how I get my fix. You should get your magic spoon. Trev, we did this the other day. I'm talking baseball. I think, would you rather have your cereal taste like shit and be unhealthy or taste good and be healthy? I think taste good and be healthy. 
I think you're right. Final answer. Yeah. You're kind I think of. I got that one right. You're kind of the magic spoon of this company. Is that fair? People have been saying that. You know, I was thinking about my lemon vanilla flavor I gave out yes. for free to Magic Spoon. Like, there you <laughs> go. There's a, there's a new flavor for you. I also think something like you could take Magic Spoon. Okay. And you know, like people are trying to be healthy these days. There's healthy ice cream out there that ex- that's actually yeah. pretty good. Magic Spoon is a great crumble on top of some of that healthy ice cream. Ooh, it, would work. Ooh. it would work for that. Do you know what I mean? Yes. There's so many uses for it. Go ahead and make uh, Magic Spoon marshmallow um, treats. Isn't there a place I'm in dreaming. New York that really does that? Yeah, like, I think pl- I think places do that. I'm dreaming of the of the frosted on top of some ice cream now. Mm. Crush that you up try a little that bit. Out. Mm. How much protein's Magic Spoon got in it? A lot. Uh, Trev, what if I told you 13 to 14 grams? And what if I told you they don't have a vanilla lemon flavor yet, but they do have cocoa, <laughs> fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. Maple waffles, that's the sneaky one. That's... Mm. Maple Waffles, the two-inning guy out of the bullpen that ends the game. It's kind of like, whoa. You got that? Yeah. Ready to go? Uh, so go to magicspoon.com slash johnboy. Make your custom bundle of cereal. Try it today. Uh, and you save $5 off your order at checkout. Uh, Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's back with a 100% happiness guarantee. God, I need that. Uh, so if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money. So there you go, people. Uh, win, win, win. Magicspoon.com slash John Boy. $5 off when you use code John Boy at checkout. Um, Trevor, as you know, we are sneaking up on the playoffs. Playoffs? You are coming out here uh, for the mm-hmm. wild card games. You've got a busy couple days coming up. That's right. I'm doing um I'm going to the Rams game again yep. on Sunday. Supporting my good friend Matthew. Whoops. And then uh yeah, Monday I'll be on a flight. On a bird out to see you guys. And you know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna get in super late. Mm. But the city calls me. Yeah. The streets mm-hmm. call me when I get there. I'm gonna have to take a little walk. Yeah. You know, get get uh, accompanied back with the with the dirty streets in New York. They love me. I love them. It's it's gonna be marvelous. I can't wait to uh, can't wait to get there. It's gonna be good. I mean, the JJRs. We have a lot of our day ones in here. Chill, Al, Tom, Ace. I know we're we're gonna be seeing everyone for the live streams. Trev will be here. It's gonna be a Yankees game. That's gonna be that's gonna be intense, man. My brain really hasn't processed that, dude. Hey, we still haven't figured that out, dude. What if it's if they're hosting the game? What are we doing? I think we're streaming, man. It uh, it it sucks a little bit, but it can, could be our can only. We send one person. It could be our only Yankees playoff content for the year, so we kind of got to. Um, so we'll just have to root super hard for the Yankees to win. We'll hit up T Wade after the game and find out where the celebration is, and we'll probably. That's how we'll get involved. Oh, <laughs> Trev perked up a little bit for that. Um, so, you know, whatever. There's there's Insta DMs. Trevor, I had a little memory lane moment the other day. I forget if, if we were posting some old clips or what it was, but I was kind of reliving the year a little bit. Wow. Calendar year and this year. A, first of all, you know Sam that runs everything <sighs> at this company, basically. Yes. Sam started working here in January. She hasn't been here for a full year yet. She seems like, I mean, I feel like I've known Sam for five years. I think we have. It, was it like end of January too? He, like she had to move up here and stuff. We kind of told her like, hey, we, we'd love for you to work here. And she's like, all right, like I just, I have to move. So that was kind of a whoa well moment. I saw video... I forget if it was earlier this year in BBD, we're going to have to check with you, or even if it was a calendar year ago. No beard BBD. Mm-hmm. I can't Whoa. even, I can't even like picture it anymore. I went, I think beginning of March is when I let that go. Just decided, let's just see what happens. Nobody's blossomed 
at this company more than BBD since I've been here. I, I almost lost the beard today. If you want to, discuss I was just it. gonna say you just shaved it closer than I've seen in a while. So, I don't. I don't know if you had more memory no. and stuff you wanted to get into. Let's talk about it. So today I went for the haircut. Needed it real bad because like th- for like three mm. weeks I've been saying I wanted it. We were at Beach Week. I wanted yeah. it then, but whatever. D- mm. Schedules didn't line up. We're busy. I was like, I need it before October, for sure. Uh, so I identified this morning. It's like, all right, I'll go. Nine o'clock appointment or something. So I go. I go to my guy, Eric. Um, he's a good dude. He's done like a good job with my last dozen haircuts. I don't know. Love that. Um, uh oh. And he does the hair part all right. And at one point, English isn't his primary language, which I think played a factor for the first time in our relationship today. Um, so he he like asks like, oh, you want like beard connected to to the cyber because i'm not used to like having any questions about it sure as well so i was taken back by the question i said oh, oh yeah i guess connected yeah because uh, i wanted to keep it as is um and then i think he took that as me saying oh yeah disconnect it mm. and then it goes down i don't know if you can tell from here trev but oh wow it's pretty it's it's kind of mm. severe in real life it took me from head on, it looks kind of normal, but like from the side, it was pretty drastic. And the people who've looked at it are like, "Oh, that's act- that's not like a bad thing. That's like a style of it, but it's just not what I've had." So I w- I went home and I shaved like real close. C- cost me like twenty five minutes getting here, which I guess didn't matter. Um, because I was gonna just go from there. So I just Can got I real something? close. Yes. It looks great, BVD. You, you like look great. It? Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm really happy about the hair short on the sides. I know you'd think I would show it off by not wearing the hat, but short on the sides opens up hats to me because it looks cr- really dumb when it was really long on the side. So I was excited to wear a hat today because of the haircut. Um, so yeah, I was scared for a second. I was gonna have to like just get rid of it, but mm. I think I think we'll survive, and in a week it'll just be fine. But. That might be, end up being the way you just get it done from now on. Right? It might grow yeah. on you. Look, I didn't. I don't hate the feeling of not having it up there, but I also feel like that's the part that made it uh, the whole thing kind of slimming, which is big for me. Mm. So I don't know. You know, I, the first time I ever got really diced up, and I'm talking, you know, it was razor lined up here all mm. the way down. I was taken aback a little bit. I didn't know if it was really me, but then I looked and it, I felt, and there <laughs> were things, and I never looked back. Yeah, like I, I won't let anybody just do that because you really need to be a good barber to line someone up the correct way. But if I know I'm with the right guy, that's all I'm getting. And I'll tell you what, I didn't think I'd ever want that, but here I am now, and I can't put it down. I mean, you were there for the first time I got lined up. Mm. Um, that was what in the fuck was that? How was, long ago was that? Was that that was two spring trainings ago, right? That was two spring trainings ago. That's a joke, man. Huh. Yeah, I mean, that's, we are now that our lives are kind of on the internet. It is a weird thing where time moves, but also doesn't move at all. Um, like Sam feels like she's worked here. For a decade That haircut I don't know In in my head that actually feels pretty recent mm-hmm. Like you could have told me that was it this spring training um, I'm like the, On the flip side of that haircut When we were looking at old live stream stuff And Zach and I were looking at some just old vlog stuff Last week I think I, piggybacking off, off live streams mm-hmm. Like Because that was your last haircut until like right after the season, <laughs> yes. So your so your oh, hair yeah. looked yes. crazy. October last year, yes. <laughs> I know it was October because, and this was probably a story I told on JJR. So I hadn't had my hair cut since the pandemic hit because I got diced up in February by like a show guy, um, Andy Fade. Andy Fade, yes. Um, mm-hmm. and then no haircut, no haircut. World scary. Haircut not a priority. We're working, we're working. World getting a little better. So I was like, I need a haircut. <laughs> so I went to this guy in my neighborhood. Hadn't been anywhere in my neighborhood because I moved there right before the pandemic. 
and uh, walk in the first place, literally the closest barber to me. And uh, the guy looks at me and he goes, he like sizes me up. He's about to say no. And he just goes, what are we doing? And I was just like, <laughs> I don't know. One and a half, two on the sides, nope. <laughs> flip it up in front. And he goes, okay, I can do that. And so I'm like, whatever, this isn't the vibe I wanted to start my haircut. And this, mm-hmm. was, this was early October, so come about a year ago. And I said, you know, he starts the small talk, and I was getting my haircut because my birthday was coming up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And the guy cracks a little smile, and he goes, it's my birthday tonight. Oh, Wow. And he goes, he's like, that's why I was hesitant. I'm supposed to have dinner with my family. Um, But then he kind of smiled some more and he goes, we're both Libras. And I was like, all right, man, we're buddies for life at this point. Um, And that was kind of- So he was about to leave and and snuck you in right before the the ending bell? I mean, shout out. Yeah, that's my guy. That's nice of him. You know? That's nice. Before his family dinner for his birthday. So that- that guy's a grinder, man. That's the real stuff. Um, BBD, you mentioned, I don't know in, if you very much don't want to. You don't have to mention it, but I know Trevor will be happy and you might tell him in a couple days, but you have some other news that I don't know if you want to. Like what we just settled right before this? Um, oh, my God. Now you have to say something. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, that's not like official, 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 but like moving soon. Oh yeah, I knew that. Okay, I didn't know. Yeah, like maybe. I think like we have November eighteenth. I think Let's is go. is the current target date. So I mean, we're talking about the beard looking tight, city BBD playoffs. Is this the first time you've lived like on your own? No, I lived right after college. Well, I guess I was home for the summer doing this stuff, but I needed a fake real job for a little bit before this all got That's real. Right. Uh, so I, I did live by myself out in Lancaster, Pennsylvania for like, Oh yeah. Months. Yeah. Um, down the street from Jonathan Abeladejo, who I didn't find out until this year was playing for the Lancaster barnstormers wow. at the time. So I would have gone to a game as a joke if I knew he was there, but Jonathan help. I don't, I don't know who that is. I have no it's an idea. Old reliever, is. Right? old Yankee reliever. I think they flipped him. Oh for, yeah, he had a good year, and then they flipped him for Clippard, or they traded Clippard for him. Because I think okay. people were mad because Clippard was kind of good, mm. and then they traded him for Albaladejo, who I think ended up okay, and then he flamed out. Well, we covered it all there, but man, young man moving to the city. I God. I have. I have one moment in my life or, you know, a couple moments in my life that really stick out to me where like I had a very clear head and I thought about the world in a different way. Okay. Now we're talking. This is JJR talk. One of those moments. um, I think I was probably 21 Mm. young coach Trev. Um, No girlfriend. Yep. Single as can be. My friends and I were renting this um, house, big house. It was during the market crash. Nobody was buying homes. So these people were renting it to us just to like save some money as their home was on the market. So we got this great deal. So I'm living with like my four best friends. Uh, my brother's there. Like we ha- we're just having a great time. I was at a bar. It was like 1.30 mm-hmm. at night. And I looked around and I said, I don't have to tell anyone anything. Mm. I can do whatever I want. I have no one to check into. It was like the most freeing feeling I've ever felt. And I don't have, I'll never have that again. I will never have a moment where like I literally had zero responsibility. For the rest of my life, I'll never have that feeling again. So BBD, if you're like in that zone, just take a little... Little, little mental image, little screenshot, if you will, of of uh, this point in your life, man. Because gosh, dang, I'm excited to get to get back to that. Because I did, I did have it for a little bit, uh, and because I would have had to move home for pandemic stuff anyway. But yeah, no, it's uh, free, baby, being free. Something about that. The the parts of life 
that sneak up to you. You know, even even Denver Jake, me and a former roommate Jeff, used to sneak out and just get twisted up. Whenever he wanted. Not whenever. I mean, but, like, it was well. it was almost like I was on, me and him were on the same shot clock. Like, if, if a, two weeks had passed and me and Jeff didn't get ripped up and head to a bad karaoke <laughs> bar or something, like, we kind of needed to let the lead out of the mm-hmm. system. Um, Ooh, let the lead out. Uh, and I know, I know you know, I know you know. Um, speaking of, our draft today brings us back. You talk about simpler times. You talk about being free. Chat, I may have to hide you for a little bit. You know the rules. Mm. Our draft today is the elementary school draft. It is brought to you by our friends at Oso Rojo. Uh, oh, yeah. Oso Rojo, that's some, that's some real John Boy Media stuff. That's some um, put it on your eggs in the morning. Put it in whatever dish you're making. Trev loves to cook shit. That's a secret Trevor Plouffe thing. He's mixing in his Oso Rojo. John's in on the Oso Rojo. I have it in my fridge at home. It's in the fridge at the office. Mm-hmm. I've still got some in my in my family fridge. So. They're like, if you're, you know, we get caught up. We watch stuff on our phones. Um, Oso Rojo, they're real. It's a small company. We met the guy in Denver. It's small batch hot sauce, fresh ingredients, orange, ginger, jalapeno, garlic. Uh, yep. Uh, habanero mustard, umami bomb. Up your home cooking game and enhance your takeout experience. You can check out the recipes on their website. Go to www.osorojohotsauce.com and use code JOMBOY at checkout for 10% off your order. It's mm. code JOMBOY. Mix it up. You don't, don't just go to the store and grab the generic hot sauce. Don't do that. Don't do that. Like, what are you, you doing? You look like a guy that marks his food and brings it to yeah. work and puts it in the refrigerator. I look, That's what you I look like. like I label food. <laughs> oh, yes. Such a label. I look like that. a food like, label like, right Jim, like, Jim has stolen some of your yeah. lunch before and you're pissed, but you're, you also are not going to really confront him. No. So now you just, you label. I just label. I wrap tape all the way around it. <laughs> um, have to, there's no way they're going to get into that without having I create seen a seal. the label. I create There's a some seal. office bully just stealing your lunches <laughs> yeah. pretty much every day. <laughs> Sealing it back up. So go just get your, trick you. Go get yourself some Oso Rojo. Uh, they're the best. They're the best. It's, they're day one. No secret. I mean, Jake, I think you're in the same boat as me. Not not the biggest spicy fans. Flavor over spice here. Yes. I. Uh, it's not what mm. the em- I get the nervous. Emphasis is I get on. I get nervous around the spice. Uh, and Oso Rojo plays. Oso Rojo plays. Um, BBD. I think this one. May have been your and Luke's brainchild. Am I wrong on that? Yeah, it is definitely Luke is the primary creator. Okay, uh, but it's it's the elementary school draft. Uh, so we're, we're we have five categories we're drafting from. It's your ideal mm. recess game, the ideal mm. writing utensil. I suppose if you want to make pens and pencils illegal, so we all get to pick fun stuff. Mm. Uh, I'd be open to that. Okay, lunch, food, holidays, and a spirit day. Okay. Or like another, I guess otherwise, like special day. A day you have to be in school. Like you can't pick Christmas because you wouldn't be in school on Christmas, right? So I think it's an interesting conversation because you do like school Christmas parties. um, And like you do. So the day before, you'd have to say that. Like it isn't the day. You don't get Christmas. You get the final it's day a, of school as before it, Christmas. It's as it applies to the like school day. Like, you're not okay. t- like the holiday itself, obviously, we're not in school. Okay. But, in my opinion, that would be a legal pick if you want to have gentlemen's agreement. No, I just, I just think you have to phrase it that way. We all have like, to understand, like you're not getting you don't get that Christmas. day off. You're not from getting the school. gifts and shit. But we do, like, so, like some years we might had classes that did a secret Santa, or some years we, you know, you do the party stuff. And I'll like, leave it open for now, um, but okay. I will not be scared to veto, especially in this fit. This guy vetoes stuff. What is Spirit Day? So Spirit Day, I mean, I, 
I'm hesitant to give like examples, right. but like otherwise special days, like like crazy hair day or okay field trip sure. day. Yes. Oh I, yeah, I mean, I think I have all my answers ready to go, and I don't think we're. So it's a draft. I don't think I'm going to like overlap at all. I, I know I don't think I'm okay. going to overlap. Okay. I mean, that's what we'll find out here. Maybe we're going to find out some California bullshit mm. we don't know. Um, Trevor, I don't know if can you can you write a number in mm. your head or on your phone? We, a number to decide draft order. We pick numbers one to one hundred between one and one hundred, and we'll send okay. it through a random number generator. Okay, so I just need to pick a number. I can just write it. Just on Just write my it notes down. Out. I mean, mm. there's actually no. And I suppose you can just. Tell you could us. just say it, yeah, because there aren't three of us here. I'm, I'm going fifty-one. Okay. For Bernie. I'm going. Come on, baby. Twenty-four. 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 Which obviously, <laughs> which I wrote down. Okay. Because I thought it'd be well, funny, so I will take sixty-one. Wow. Okay. So that kind of kind of works. Random number. I've pulled up a random number generator. But if you want to be... I'm on it. I'll put it on the big board up here. Mm-hmm. 1 to 100. The number is 72. So, BBD, you get Ouch. to pick which draft pick you'd like. Ooh. I think... I think I, I, think I will take the... No, I want number three. Wrap around. I want the wrap around. Okay. BBD is going to take I the... I want to be able to get two picks in. The snake pick. Um... You know what? I will take I'll take the first pick. We'll sandwich Trev. Um Love it. Per use. Um This uh So Trev, you are right. I mean, there's not going to be a lot of bad options here. Yeah, I, I think we can all walk go away with first overall. Happy. This is so interesting. <sighs> You could mess this up. I could mess this up. I'm actually pretty not happy I took the one pick. I think the wraparound is where you want to be. Um, that being said, I am going to go with... You know what? I got to go with my heart. And and I don't think this is a standout pick. I'm going recess. I mean, <laughs> probably my number one activity in life is recess. And for me... It's something that'll never be replicated. I'm just going with recess football. Mm-hmm. Man, I I played so much recess football as a youth, and I just don't think that's ever going to come back at this point. Um, I don't I don't see the boys getting. You can tackle your kids. <laughs> like nobody gets hurt. You have the one kid in your friend group who's always hurt. Like that kid's collarbone snaps, but nobody really cares. Because they're just Someone, always hurt. One kid a year gets gets genuinely hurt. And it's but. the same kid. Nobody cares. <laughs> I'm going with recess football. Jake, I love that pick. Thanks. I think it was my number one in the category. Wow. 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 That's that's different. We when, when I was growing up, we had recess guys. football. No. Little, we had a team. A little soft. No, we had a team like at my school. Like in we elementary. Were, like we, yeah, we played against other. Schools. I mean, that's where California's built different. So Our built middle school didn't even have a football team. What's elementary school, by the way? Ooh, One through four. That's an interesting um, question. For me, it was K through five. I was up and six, seven, eight. Okay. They they adjusted while I was there. Mm-hmm. It was up till fourth grade, and then they added fifth grade to the elementary yeah. school. I know there's so. some places where it goes to six, and then you like seven, eight, nine middle school, ten, eleven, twelve, high and school. And dude, it's. Recess, it has to be such a terrible brand of football. <laughs> but in my head, That's what I was say. in my head, we were superstars. I mean, the plays we, were, we made, we were chucking the ball. I still like. There's a dream of of one like punt return I had in the, wow <laughs> in <laughs> recess football. <laughs> <laughs> Trev, you might be with the wrong crew. I got to, I got to college and I was in like a, I was like in a sports psychology class and like oh think about like a time when you were playing oh, sports man. that you were just like in the zone. <laughs> and everyone else was talking about very real athletic oh my moments. God. All right, that was the first one. That yeah, came we up. might have to. I don't know if you're helping my case at this <laughs> point, PBD. Um, I took my pick, uh, Trevor. California elementary school football yeah. teams. 
there's a few the few reasons I don't like recess football. Okay. Um, one is you just end up scrape knees all the time yeah. and you, are you putting a band-aid on because oh, once you put off. the band-aid on the worst part is taking it off and then you want to air it out but you also need to like put some neosporin on it we didn't have grass at my school so uh, it was like you're playing football you're playing on the freaking okay. blacktop see that's what the northeast does have a lot of grass okay that changed that a little bit okay but again we we had like a team so yeah that's fine okay that's I right. had one question. I, I wanted to make this pick, but now I'm a little bit confused. Holiday. I think you guys mentioned it. I probably wasn't listening. Okay. Is this a break? No, it's a holiday. Or just it's like a a specific as, day. It's as it's like celebrated in school. So that's we were discussing okay. that before this, and I think the most controversial right now would be Christmas, and it would be like the day before Christmas break. So like a lot of elementary okay. schools do carol like singing and shit mm. like that so that's your spin but There's you, some sort of you like don't party. get the actual out of school part yeah you're not getting christmas day itself but okay I have a clear cut number 1 I think cuz I was going to go christmas break but now that we've explained that that's not going to fly for me I'm going with writing utensil and I'm going with the smell markers Mm. smelly markers yep. that's high on my board that's pretty like good. you gotta have them <laughs> if you had them you were king yeah oh you want to smell this green apple no yeah you can't smell this you can smell the licorice go ahead and smell the licorice that's for you <laughs> yeah licorice nasty so i'm taking that i think that was for me i have another one that maybe could have been close to my first pick but I, the smelly markers for me are top notch okay Mr. Sketch is the brand that comes to mind for me. I love the pick. You're you're instantly brought to a place in time. Um, yeah. And I was going to say recess or elementary school is the only time you have utensil smell markers, but I will be telling the <laughs> office after this, if we don't have smelly markers, we're doing ourselves a disservice. We need a so, couple packs of Mr. Sketch. Oh, so yeah. There. Those are soon to be ordered. Mm. Um, it's a great pick, Trev. Trev, Thank what you. what were Very you much. a not to get to what what grade is Teddy in? Is he, he's in elementary school? Right? First grade. Okay. Yeah. Have you had young young first grade? Have you had any? I mean, you've had to have some flashback moments where you're like, oh shit, like. Yeah, he's um, the homework is fun. You know, him bringing it home. He can read, which is awesome. Mm. And I remember when I first learned how to read where you could like sit down and read a book by yourself that was like you know in our a at our age that was your escape to a different world right you know you, you had tv but like you could just sit and read a book and be somewhere else and now that's changed a little bit but uh, seeing him like go through that brought me back okay that's beautiful um great pick trevor bbd you have the wraparound you get back to back picks. i have the wraparound i think i'm going with two of my uh two of my number ones and what i identified as shallow categories for me sure. so i'm i'm excited this is shaking out the way it has a little bit um i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to my lunch food first i'm taking pizza mm -hmm. mm. pizza yeah. pizza day strong well, it's pizza day or just the standard cafeteria pizza that you're getting like once a week when you have like the special pizza days that that come from like a nice place in town, particularly oh. in the north northeast. Ooh. I'm drafting the ca the cafeteria pizza. I think is the pick, and it's still my number one in the food yeah. category. But just by the way, those days happen. Okay, um, it's a little northeast flex right there. Uh, yeah. And then on the wraparound, I'm gonna go to my spirit day, uh, and I'm taking my clear number one in the category. Uh, it's field day. Yeah, it's just a whole day of recess. Yeah. Full day of recess. I have I have one other pick that, that I would have really liked there, uh, but this was a clear number one in the category for me. No, that's a field day. So did uh, Trev, and I guess I, I was going to ask you that, because this is a, a big thing in the Northeast. It's just one day a year you get grouped up with, like, I guess how did they do it, like, would you get grouped up with four kids? Would you get... Uh, at my elementary school, I think, we had, like, kind of just your class would go around. They had, like, 20 different, like, right, stations so and games much. throughout the day. Everyone would get, like, half hour at everything. 
Yeah. That must have not been. There's probably fewer games than that, but it's just whole day of, of gym slash recess, basically. Yeah. Which it's I guess it, I guess it's very much a a, a traditionally boy pick. I, some um, girls had fun. Yeah, I think the girls yeah. had fun. Certain categories, be- certain games, better than others. So I don't know. I take back that sentence. But does that speak to you for Trev? the boys? It was it was a great day at my school. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember a field day. I'm sure we had something like it. Um, look, if we're talking about recess all day long, obviously that's a kid's dream. Yeah. No, I mean it's. So I'm I'm into that, and and then your other pick was the cafeteria school pizza. Mm-hmm. School that I went to, we didn't have a cafeteria. We just had like a lunch window. So we did get pizza brought in from everywhere. And that was obviously, Whoa. I mean, that was everybody's go-to. We had um, pizza day. We had a Subway day, an El Pollo Loco day, Subway which is day. like a BRC burrito, beans, rice, and cheese burrito. You didn't we didn't have that. <laughs> okay. Damn. Um, yeah, man. So... I, I dig the pizza thing because pizza is kind of like universal. We had it in high school too. Same thing, lunch window, but they had excellent pizza, like the sheet pan pizza, big old, and it just filled you up. So pizza's obvious. Pizza at any point, at any time up until age 18, 21, it's just, <laughs> it plays. Never had a cafeteria in my life. Just so I'm so thrown by that. Yeah. <laughs> I, went to, I, went to, I went to small Catholic private school okay. my whole life. So that, that'll explain some things. Yes. I mean, I was obviously a bring your lunch to school kid. I think I still give off that vibe to people today. As was I. Pizza but days. the cafeteria, that's where that's where like life happened. Okay. All right. Yeah, we didn't have it, man. We had, we had you know benches outside under a pavilion and you went and got your food or you went to your locker and got your lunch bag and that was it, man. Wild. Wild. I was constantly disappointed in my mom giving me a peanut butter and jelly when I saw my friends, you know, opening up their containers with like rice and some good like steak or chicken, Oof. some noodles or something. And I'm sitting here with this soggy PB and J. I'm like, Mom, like you can step it up a little bit. You know, I, I came to love me a soggy PB and J, and that's obvious. Mm. Um, yeah. Trevor, the pick, the board is back to you. You have your utensil. I am going to go with lunch food. Okay. And I don't think I need to pick this number two because I think it'll be there at the end. But best lunch food is when your parents forget to give you a lunch. They also forget to give you lunch money, so they have to bring you like a bag of fast food. Oh, midday. Interesting. And I you're flexing on everybody because you, you got Mickey D's or Jack in the Box. And everyone's looking at you like, there goes that man. You smell those fries? Like, there goes that boy. Wow. Oh. That's my that's my recess food. Wow. Okay. Or my lunch food. Such a, it's such a good twist on the pick. That was I a good twist. It. I mean, you know, there's... Po- it happened quite a bit to me. That's why, I, like, it really... My, grand, my grandma would have to bring my lunch, and she'd pick up McDonald's. There's a so. quarter of my heart that... And it's the quarter of my heart that wants to veto it is strictly my outfit today. Mm-hmm. But you're abs- if you're at an elementary school lunch and you got the golden arches with you, you're undefeated. Yeah. You just won. Yeah, the kid who yeah. got who <laughs> nobody, the, nobody's McDonald's. happier than you. No, no one in the cafeteria has a bigger smile than you. Yeah, which is a little a little bit of a weird study on our society. Um, <laughs> geez. Um, that was a power play, Trev. I'm uh, I'm not mad at it at all. Uh, an that's, impressive flex. Man, that's a good pick. An yeah. impressive flex. Um, your guys' lunches are both taken, and I I have one lunch remaining that I was I was hoping for, so I can leave that. Um, let's see. I think what I am gonna do. So I need a holiday school spirit day. And then I probably should go writing utensil because BBD is still out there. There's, I think there's two clear writing utensils. There's a couple curveballs. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with my, my holiday. I'm going Valentine's Day, man. Mm-hmm. I, I'm doing it, man. Is there... You're young. You don't know emotions. You don't know anything. 
But you know two or three gals in class that if they give you a Valentine's Day card, that's not even personal or anything. It is going to make your day. <laughs> you know, they're giving out the same card to every kid in class, but if you got one too... You were included in that. ...from Carla or Laura or whoever it was, you're on cloud nine, and I... At the same time, I also remember, and I don't, you know, a lot of people don't put this in the good bucket. I remember my mom found out I had a crush on a girl in third grade. Uh, so she gave me like a box of chocolates to give to that girl. Wow. And I obviously didn't give it to the girl. There was no <laughs> way. I ate the chocolates with my boys. Um, but still, that feeling of Valentine's Day, you're going to get some candy that day, which is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. You're going to get mm -hmm. cards. You're interacting with people. It's probably a scary day for a lot of people, and that's fine, too. Feel that emotion. So I'll take V-Day. And even, even without the emotional aspect of it all, um, you're still getting just like a lot of candy that day. Just Big a lot of candy, candy changing day. hands. Yeah. God, so candy a, hearts, a good day. kind of like disgusting, but you also can't beat them. They're just so specific to Valentine's Day that you look forward to it. And you're a little kid, so you, kind of what you're saying with the reading, like you're reading each one. You're like, be mine. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yours truly. What's that mean? <laughs> um, did you, you can, do, have you done V-Day cards? with? The only thing I'll say about my, my experience with that in, in school is that we always had such small classrooms, 25 kids, mm. that like everybody got everybody. Yeah. Right. For me, so there everybody wasn't really anybody them. left out. Uh, but I think the candy aspect alone and V-Day is kind of parked right in the middle there where there's like no holiday. Mm -hmm. You know, you're yeah. back from Christmas break, like summer breaks f so far away. That you need, you need that little like filler little, holiday there to kind of get you through. It's a good time to get it. Yeah. It's probably a good day for the teachers. I don't know. You probably get some tears and stuff. Probably fun for the yeah. teachers. They're hooking up and stuff. Um, then you hear the noises coming out of your parents' bedroom mm. at night. It's a weird day. It's a weird day. <laughs> Fixing. Yeah, tell, tell everybody yeah. about it. Fixing mommy's back. Um, <laughs> and I will okay. send us into the third round. Uh, again, I can, or I can't wait on my utensil, my writing utensil, excuse me. Um, uh, I'm between two things here. You know what? I have to go honest. I'm going to go crayons. Um, and I'm specifically going to go, uh, with the 64 box of crayons. Mm. Cause that was, that's kind of the first game changer you run into in your life. Like, you've seen that box of eight crayons or whatever it is, and then when the 64 comes out, you're like... 64 pack with the sharpener? Whoa. Life does... It's like the first time you play in a stadium with a third deck. Yeah. Like, you open that box up, there ain't just one row, it's several rows. That's <laughs> the perfect comparison. Um, you know what that's like. I know what that's like. Played on Milwaukee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> yeah, I, and hey, I'm going to be honest, the, the writing utensil draft pick was never going to speak to me. I think you guys have seen my handwriting. It's atrocious. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's why, atrocious. and BBD, you have a utensil left, so I don't want to give it away. But for me, chalk mm -hmm. uh, kind of was off the board because there was a little bit of nerves because if you're writing chalk, you're kind of writing in front of people. And that's mm, that yeah. could go haywire for me quick. So I went with the crayon pick. Now that you've made your pick, my plan the whole time was utensil last round. And just okay. See what's left. Okay. Um, okay. Well, Trevor. In the sandwich pick. I thought I had something to say about your about your uh, your crayons. Yeah. But I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, here's a little tip for parents. Oh, here we there. go. Tune in. When your kids are learning to write and hold the pencil correctly, what you really do is you take a crayon and you break it in half and make it really small, and that forces them to hold it the right way. Mm. So like that's just that. a little tip for you. Because there's a lot of kids out there that you know they'll do this to the crayon right. or they'll like grip it really strange. Like you want your kid to write correctly, so do that. Wow. A little, that feels like a good way to And that's it. parenting advice. Parenting. How about that? Yeah. 
Uh, I have a, for my next pick. I think you guys totally missed this one. I'm oh. shocked that I'm getting it in the third round. I'm absolutely shocked. I thought it was a, a first a first round, no doubt. I'm going with Halloween for my holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's candy. It's dress yeah. up. You get to be whatever you want. Like it's. I don't think there's a better holiday in school because you get you do you celebrated at school. Teachers are in a wonky mood. They're dressed up. You can't have regular class when you're dressed up. Mm. So I'm I'm going. You get candy at school. Straight off to candy trick or treating with your boys. Mm. And you're just overloading, man. Like you're you're rat that night, like Halloween. After you get the two school candy and the trick or treat candy, you're rationing it, trying to say, I could do five pieces a day for a hundred days if I wanted to. Yeah. And then your parents steal three quarters of it, and you're like, "What happened?" And that happens. But Halloween, no doubt. It's a great pick. I, I was between Valentine's Day and Halloween. It's uh, a one A one B situation. Candy involved both ways. Costumes, yup. Um, yeah, no. I mean, there's there's no argument against it. It's a great day. I was a mummy for like five years in a row. Mm. What was your number one Halloween costume, costume, BPD? Um, mm, I don't want to talk about it. No, the one that comes to mind, uh, I did dress up as Hannah Montana in sixth grade. Okay. I I truly, truly not saying this, not trying to be funny, not trying to get away with just saying this and not giving you evidence. I don't think there's any pictures out there. Okay. Uh, If I find them, we can certainly look at them sometime. Hannah Montana. Uh, How do you dress like Hannah Montana? Get a blonde wig, have your neighbor up the street, uh, uh, borrow a bra from her, get you some mm. boobs. It's a good time. Hot. Oh, wow. Hot. Yeah. Older, older neighbor. You went? I was, you I was went 10. For it. Yeah, thought it was really funny. Okay. I was a skeleton a lot. Did a lot of uh, Scooby-Doo stuff Just as lazy. Well. Teddy, Teddy's a skeleton with an axe. That was his ask this halloween so love yeah. that no it's a it's a great pick trev um thank it's you it's a good pick because i i was gonna take it right here wow so you've you have snake okay so mm. bbd you've got two left mm-hmm. your holiday and your writing utensil mm-hmm. interesting so i'm gonna go get my recess game off the board I love football, which you picked, so I get my next best option. Uh, and I'm going to take Foursquare. Okay. You had an absolute blast playing Great it. Great game. There's a lot of moving in and out quick. It's a, it's a good pace, so everybody can get involved. You can get a couple games going if you've got a big enough class. Um, and if you're, if you're like, staying in that game a while, I mean, everybody was lined up watching. You, feel, you truly do feel like the king, yeah. literally and figuratively. Man, that's a good point. I forget the rules. I mean, I played four square a lot. You're in the you're in the one square that serves the ball. That's the ultimate goal is to get over there, right? So you and then a one bounce and I, I totally have forgotten the rules. You're yeah, you're all over it. I mean, you have the the serving square. That's where you want to get to, and then you have the new entry square. And then if you yeah. can climb the ladder, you know whoever gets out gets out. New person hops into the the entry square. Um, one bounce or, you know, that's it starts getting crazy when kids start making up rules, cherry bombs. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you catch the ball or does it have to be like a slap hit? I think traditionally, I think traditionally it was a hit. I think there were versions you would play or some. I forget what people might call. There's sometimes a call word. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, we're catching for a little bit. Okay. It's a, it's a great game, game though. You learn Great a lot game. about society from that game. Yeah, it's a you good hand eye game. Good mm-hmm. hand eye, baby. Do you won me over with the? Uh, if you have a good four square day, you run it for a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you're king of the castle. It feels good, <laughs> and like it moves so like every, like if you're waiting, like you're forced to watch the game and like get in quick if you're if you're on the sideline, you know. Yeah. So. We had Everyone's much different watching. childhoods. That's what <laughs> I'm, swear? I'm realizing. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. Okay. BBD, then, the final round. Yes. Well, I'm on my wrap around. Is this my final pick? No. 
No, we got five rounds, so I've got... What do we have? It's five. There's five categories. So I still have my writing utensil and my <laughs> holiday. You mm-hmm. have a wrap around as well. Okay. Your final two picks coming. I believe it's your spirit day and your Oh, dude. I very much thought spirit day holiday was one thing. On our original list it mm-hmm. was. Oh. Okay. okay. On our original list it was and then we broke it up uh cuz we wanted cuz there's just days that aren't holidays that you like. You okay. Know? I'll have yeah. to think about that. Okay. Cuz I haven't at all. But I'll I'll play the game. Okay, it's never hurt you before. No. <laughs> On that case, kind of what you thrive. Where I live. Uh, maybe I will take my holiday now. Then okay. Because I can sit on either, so I just got to pick one. Mm. Uh, for my holiday, this is kind of my my biggest trickster pick. Uh, birthdays. Mm. The class birthday. Good one. Parents come in with some. The parents bring in some baked good. If you want to make, if you want to say that happens too often, fine. Then my own, I guess. And everyone's really nice to you. Birthday. Uh, okay. Birthdays are birthday, really good. Birthday. You get a special treat. People are nice to you. If you, if it's your friend's birthday and they picked you to be like the helper to pass stuff out, you're king. Ooh. Again, it's all a power play for me. Mm. Um, a lot of power plays with you guys. Because I, I like. I've that. had so the few one days thing, though, where I is, feel uh, more than adequate. Mm. And these are the opportunities I had. Mm. I like it. Were you like, see, I don't like when people sing me happy birthday. I think that's just Ooh. some people like it. Some people don't. Mm. So that's always been like, I hate it in a, a tough one. I for liked me. it in the classroom. It was fine. It's like, yeah, everyone, everyone's getting there. Like now it would really make me uncomfortable. Cause yeah. like, I'm, I'm just because around nobody really wants to sing. Yeah. Mm. When we're kids, I think people were more like into it and it's fine. And it's quick. But I wasn't a cha 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 kid, so we'd be so I, I like hated those. So we'd be mm. like, we'd like go through every time people be like, "Oh, do you like want cha cha chas?" And I was always a pretty firm. No. I was also a summer birthday, so I'd be Me I'd be too. kind of uh, it'd be like a whole day that was like all the summer kid birthdays in June. We'd just get together and it'd be a big one. But that was also like the biggest what? celebration day because it was like six different baked goods going around. That's so inclusive. I wish that my school thought of that because I had my birthday is June fifteenth. We were typically out of school by then. Mm, that was right on the border for me when it would get. Wow. was July eighth, yeah. so I was always out of school by then. So you got birth? I'm hmm. I zoned out a little bit because I was googling spirit days. You got birthday? Yeah, took birthdays what? as a holiday. Wait, what? <laughs> you didn't go to school? So you weren't in school for your birthday, but they celebrated it. We did like a summer, a kids with summer birthdays thing. That's wild. Yeah, it could because I, th- I think if we just skipped it, I would have resented the birthdays forever. Because I was like, oh, I never get this. As is, I'm the I'm like one of the youngest kids in the class. Someone in your region was forward thinking because that's yeah. I think I don't. I think not long before me, it wasn't a thing. But okay. Yeah, we the uh, the summer okay. kids would link up a little bit at my school. I'm I'm happy yeah, for yeah. you. Never happy got to birthday. Do. When we were uh, last year, I was working here. We were here for my birthday. It was the first time I've ever had to like be somewhere on my birthday, like work or something or school. It's such a fascinating like dive into your guys' childhood right now. We're finding out. We're fi- we're finding ourselves as you do at a young That's age. Cool. What a All right, I, I guess I'm up, up. Trevor. I think I have Spirit Day and Recess Game. I don't think you're picking either of these, so I can it doesn't matter the the order mm-hmm. I go on. For my Spirit Day, this also could have been a first rounder for me. Okay. I'm going Book Fair. Mm-hmm. Classic Book Fair, number 2 on my Spirit Day board. Book Fair is a good time. Incredible. Teddy just had his Book Fair, so it's very fresh in my mind. I mean, I would go I wouldn't say I was flush with cash. I probably had 10 bucks, which is pretty nice. Back in the day, mm. I was straight to R.L. Stein mm. goosebumps. Maybe I would do a Hardy Boys if I was feeling mm. a little like a thriller. But typically, I was just straight up goosebumps. Let's see what let's see what monster we got to fight. Is it going to be a gerbil that eats some toxic thing and grows? You know, what? where are we going with it? So goosebumps, book fair, my number one spirit day. Book fair, you're getting out of a certain class, 
Like your your class gets to go to the book fair and check it out, so that's a win. There's some like games and toys that sneak in, so you go check that out or yeah. know, see if that's in the budget. Um, and if I was forced into getting a book, um, I was getting a wishbone, um, a a the dog that <laughs> that was a detective of sorts. Um, okay. So. Or Animorphs when they came out. Animorphs was big. Um, I like animals. But, yeah, Trev, that's an emotion, man. They still have that paper. They send home that paper that's way they too still thin. Have that. They still have the paper. I don't understand why. I gave Teddy a 20 bone. So go knock yourself out, kid. Damn. Go knock yourself out. It was probably. He brought back this one book. It's a... Uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, you know, there's like a whole, yeah. there's like 20 books. And they're they're pretty funny. We like we read them together all the time. He got the spooky stories one. And he's like, he wanted it to be scary. It turns out it was like, it's more way more silly than scary. Mm. And he said, I feel like I got gypped, Dad. I want to bring it back. Wow. I don't know if he can. That's your boy. It's, it's I bullshit, wanted Dad. more out scared. of this. I'm returning yeah. it. After the first two, there's like a bunch of short stories in it. After the first two, he's like, I don't want to read this anymore. Mm. Wow. So, Book Fair. Book Fair is a great pick. A great pick. Um, okay. Okay. So, what I am left with a spirit day, which I, I've told you guys I've been prepped for. <laughs> um, I think I found a couple that I'm interested in. Um, and then I need my, my lunch food. I think I'm, I'm going to take an all timer. I mean, a classic, nothing crazy here. I'm going chicken nuggets. Mm -hmm. The nuggies. Yeah. When did you get nuggets? How did you get nuggets? East coast, like chicken nuggets and pizza are the days. Like those are the, Mm, those are the only two I could think of when I was making the, those are like the fist pump. When you walk in, those are the, like, am I going to have to scrounge up a couple quarters <laughs> and go try to get me some chicky nuggies? Um, Wait, hey, I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah. Okay. Oh, stepping away, still listening. So those, for me, are yeah. those Northeast, I guess? <clears throat> I guess so. Yeah. This will check when I was, the chat after this. That's why Trev's fast food pick for lunch I love so much because I could only think of pizza and and nuggies. So, yeah. So I was struggling to come up with a third, and I didn't want to just go like PB and J because I was like, I was thinking like you, you get it like from the cafeteria. Right. Uh, was like the idea behind the category. And nuggets just have a, I think they have a sharing quality mm. to them. If you take a buddy's nugget, you're okay. Yeah. Um, or if you give out a chicken nugget, you're all right. Like that doesn't change the balance of your your day. So. That was that was the last food item that was on my mind. Um, Wait, can I? I need to know more about these cafeterias. Yeah, so you get a cafeteria, yeah. and then every day there's. What's the options like? So here's my question back to you before I I really get start okay. we get started on it. D- did you have a regular lunch person? Lunch lady. Yeah, she lunch worked lady. in the lunch. She she worked in the lunch window. Okay. Okay. So let's start there. Yeah, just a lunch window. You went up. There was there were things you could buy. We had these things called Frutos, mm. which cost a quarter. It was a pack of gummies, basically. Oh. Uh, corn nuts, things of that nature, some chips, stuff like that. And then there was the main thing. There was only like one main thing every day. It was like pizza. I think pizza might have been every day. There, there was, was a pizza option. You could get a slice of za. Slice of and then it was, like I said, Subway or... El Pollo Loco or something like that. That's what I'm trying to relive right now, BBD. I feel mm. like there was a, a meal of the day. At my elementary school, which is what we're picking from, I think right. it was if you were one of the kids that got the hot lunch every day. I think, I think each day was a thing. But the only ones I could think of were Nugget Day, and I think Friday was pizza. Pizza, nuggets. Yeah, I feel like it was one and done. I was going to say, was there always a consistent backup of pizza or something? But I don't no, think there, there wasn't, was. There wasn't something that was your option. Every, in elementary school, it's just your parents signed you up for hot lunch. Yeah. 
which I, my parents didn't. They gave. They were. I was a take right. your own lunch kid. Did uh, someone ever knock your tray out your hands? Ooh. We didn't have trays. Like I didn't do like a real cafeteria thing. Like that. There was only one cafeteria incident. Well, actually, there's a couple. I mean, once you get to high school, um, a lot of hormones and stuff are flying. As a mm. youth, no, nothing going on. Just fun. Just boys being dumb, debating sports, video games, all of it. Right. High school, I think the last day of freshman year, we brought in a bunch of, like, two-liter sodas. Like, our our lunch table of eight dudes all brought in, like, a two-liter bottle of soda, and we're like, you know, soda for everyone. Like, you know, let's rip... Just, Let's rip it up. Wow. That's kind of a, I, I kind of like that move. It's like a predecessor to going out and getting a bottle yeah. at a table at a club. So, th- just walking up with a two. That's leader. kind of the equivalent. So, we were all excited, you know, just that giddy excitement you can't replace. A senior who was the captain of the wrestling team did walk over oh. and like pour one on top of one of my buddies. Um, and that was tough and that's, um, you know, I mentioned, I mentioned, how old were you? I mentioned Jakey Stoner thoughts. I mean, he was probably 18. We were 14, something like that. Oh, you guys were fresh. Yeah. Uh, Nothing. nothing Exactly. So that's the thing. Like in the, in the high school pecking order, there's nothing there. I mean, the thing that got me hot. And, man, I, I wish I made a move, and I wish, you know, he probably beat the shit out of me. But I mentioned he was the captain of the wrestling team, and you never know yeah, with wrestlers, dude. Dude, I I had him. You always know with wrestlers. Yeah. Don't fight a well, wrestler. Well, dude, here's the thing that pisses me off to this day. He was in, like, the 130 weight class because this is high school. Ooh. So, dude, and back then, I was kind of the same build. I was, like, a buck 80. It was. You still didn't want any part. No, of I think he still kicks my ass, but I think I can flop him for a little bit. Where at least I'm like defending our honor. So I don't know. That one's uh, one of the few things that keeps me up. Like that's 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 one of the few. You know, if I got five tokens to like relive a life situation, I think that might be on there, and I think I might just give it hell. I mean, look, you either practice like wisdom right there which is staying out of it or you try to be the hero i think either choice is yeah. is fine such a you're a good such either a way bag move i bet you know and like i think that kid still like he had siblings around my age and stuff and i bet you know he's an adult now i bet he would be pretty sad to hear about that story but he was a senior in high school on one of his last days so it was the coolest he's he'll ever right. be. Like that was the peak of like how cool or influential he'll ever be. It's tough. Maybe that's maybe that should be the takeaway statement. Um mm. so I take chicken nuggets. I need my spirit day. I am scrolling through spirit days. Um I'm going to assume um that first day of school doesn't count. That's not really a spirit day. I'd be open to it. I'd, I'd I don't allow think I'd veto that. I'm going first Especially day of school, if you're then, scrambling. Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge, and I was a huge first day of school kid. You're obviously not learning anything. You're meeting friends and people, and, like, especially elementary school, for me, like, your friends for the year kind of got dictated by the class. Like, that, that kind of dictated a lot of my, like, birthday parties that year. Like, that... I remember there was a pair of twins in my grade that, like, one year I was in his one of the twins' class and I was his friend all year. The next year I wasn't. I was with the other twin. Mm -hmm. And then I was, like, his friend all year. So, like, it was kind of a first day of school was an exciting time. Everyone's got their new clothes on, their first day of school outfit. The new yeah. Like, I'm, you know, who am I sitting next to? Like, all the goods. I loved all of that stuff. Because that was not trying to learn. So I'll, I'll take that. I love first day of school as well. I always loved school. Big school guy. And I remember, this is going to actually sound bad. 
<laughs> I had a first day of school. I think I was a junior in high school. Hmm. Might have even been a senior in high school. And this is no reflection on my parents. Yeah. Like obviously they paid my they paid my tuition. But I showed up first day of school, like junior year, ready to go. I get a call from the principal's office, come see me. Hey, your parents haven't paid your wow. some some fee yet. Can't go to school. No. Best first day of my life. <laughs> I went home. I was like, you guys forgot to pay. I'm home. What's up? That's pretty good. What's on TV right now? I got to watch Dr. Phil and Judge yeah. Judy, but whatever. I'll do it. I'll, did I catch prices right at the sure beginning? Did. Got it. Sure did. Halfway through. Um, man, that's good. <laughs> that's good. First day of school. Nope. Not happening today. Got to go God, home. The principal's awesome. office, man. I was in there. A yeah. Lot. I was yeah, there. but was like not kid. bad, not like bad. They tried to keep me out of trouble a lot. This is high school. I'm talking. I was an angel. Great school. Yeah. See, I was kind of straight straight A's. I was everything. kind of vice at at one point. I just flattened out. Like I, I was pure chaos all the time, like through third grade, and then just kind of well, I kind of went. Okay. Not Roman. Hmm. I've got one heavy piece of elementary school baggage that I don't think I've ever told on a John Boy Media Network, and I don't know if I'm ready to. Um, Is it heavy? I might have to check with BBD on it. Um, okay. And see if he has any idea. Um, and that's how you tease the people. Um, you teased me. I did tease you. Uh, Trev, I think you have your last pick. Yeah, I have a recess game. And I don't know if this is like a West Coast thing or not. Uh, later on in my life, all boys high school, it was strictly hacky sack. That's what we did. But we're doing grade school here. So my game is called Butts Up. You guys ever play that game? Excuse me? Is, is this the same? You, it's, you, need, you need the big wall. And then you threw the ball, oh, yeah. and someone had to catch the ball. And if you bobbled it, you had to run and touch the wall before the next person threw the ball at the wall. If you didn't, you had to stand up there and just wear <laughs> it. Mm. <laughs> Trev, I really wanted to Is that not add a... this game. For us, this was what our school called wall ball. Yeah. I think, and I really wanted to pick it, but I didn't know. I know there's a few different games called wall ball. Um. Okay, well, yeah, mine, it was called, we called it butts up. I wanted to pick it, yeah, real bad, uh, but I didn't know how to frame it. So, so I'm really happy you did. And Love I'm really game. happy you yeah. called it butts up. Yeah. Yeah, we never called it wall ball, but I know. I mean, obviously, I understand why you would call it wall ball. <laughs> you can see how that might happen. Wow, <laughs> big um, <laughs> wow. big hand eye game. I might have learned some things on the on the blacktop yeah. there. You uh, I had a good arm, so I was also you know people didn't want right. me to throw. Yeah, they didn't the want to drop the ball where you could recover it. Yeah, it's also a humbling game. I feel like because you know, I mean, I at that age was pretty good in the hand eye realm. Um, mm -hmm. and I think whenever I got at my peacockiest moment, maybe take the eye off the ball for a second. That's when you bobble it. That's when you screw up. Challenge yourself. Um, so yeah. I, I think that's uh, that game ha made you look inside a little bit. You had to, you had to complete the play. Um, butts up, huh? Butts up. That's what we called it. I do have one particular story I'd like Please. to give about. It's a recess game mixed with my first day of school. I went changed schools eighth grade. I went to the same school of kindergarten through seventh. Uh, we end up changing schools my eighth grade year. So I go to this new school. Nobody knows, knows me at all. I don't know anybody in this school. I show up the first day, nervous. Um, but like this was like a very soft group sure. of kids, I could tell. Like where I went to school was very not soft, like more just tough, just tougher kids. This is more of like a fancier, just soft kids. Anyways, I go, they're playing basketball at recess. And I see this one dude kind of like working the court. Mm. I stepped in, first play, he comes, tries to drive me. I steal the ball mm. from him. 
take it down, easy layup. I look at all the other kids and they're like, uh-oh, yeah. this guy's going to be a problem. And I was. Yeah. I was a problem. Hey, man. His name was Tim, His name was Tim something. I bet he remembers that day because he was the walk of the walk. Hmm. Trev. Until that day. I know, I know we laughed at BBD's punt return, but that's not far off, man. I'll remember that. I know. I'll remember that forever because these, these people, I mean, they were – they didn't, know. they didn't know. They didn't know. They had no idea. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. Tim something. Tim. Tim gave him the work. Nice guy. Oh, nice guy though. Nice guy. Tim the nice guy. Um, BBD, you have your final pick. And I think, and I'm glad this is at the end here. Um, and I don't think you guys would have been able to pick it because I think it shows just a difference of when you guys would have gone to school and when I did. Uh, as I was growing up, that was that was kind of with the the invention of the whiteboard, uh, and I and I, so I would like to draft the Expo marker. Um, the Expo marker. When you got, if you're writing on the main board, that was a feeling again, a feeling of power. But also, we would do exercises with like little whiteboards, uh, pretty often, and like you, know, you write down whatever answer, flash it. Oh, everyone got four, whatever. Uh, and you could do a lot of just fun drawing with the with the whiteboard marker. Just do a lot of just coloring in shapes. Mm. This is something I did pretty often. You like erase it with your finger and you make more designs out of that. Mm. Um, just playing with the whiteboards, man. That was a trip. I loved it. That that changed the game a little bit. When whiteboards came along, it was like going from black and white TV to color yeah. TV. Mm. I mean, now you, oh, such and such, uh, vowels are in purple consonants are in green like it made everything easier in my opinion you know you got to categorize things based on color which you know no one used colored chalk like that like if you were doing colored chalk you were doing like a painting or, or something like that not a painting a chalk drawing. i mean chalk was just it's classic but... literally i mean when did chalk and chalkboards start i don't know like if we had to put dates on that are we talking like 1800s? Chalk and Are, Oh, like chalk and chalkboards yes, when did that yes. start? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a while. So you, you think about those old photos of like them writing math equations on a five-story chalkboard. And board. then dude, you picture like Yeah, the, you know, 1801, the, the invention of the classroom blackboard. Look at that. Um and yeah, I mean, you just chalkboards got so worn out that yeah, when Dude, what about a new, what about cleaning a chalkboard? You got a new whiteboard. So, I loved clapping erasers, and that's obvious. Mm -hmm. um, you get a little high, you go outside, you just let it rip. Um, cleaning the actual chalkboard, not a good time. That seemed like cleaning I was the in whiteboard a lot. wasn't cleaning the chalkboard <laughs> as well. Because so racing it was kind of fun then, and it was an easy kind of one motion. I will say yeah. this. I feel like eventually a, ch a chalkboard just lasted longer than a whiteboard because whiteboards, they eventually held the color of the marker. And you would see, like, if you left something on the whiteboard too long, the imprint was there and you yeah. could never get it away. But a chalkboard, away. you could use soap and water and you get that thing shining. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I I have uh, my elementary school reveal is there's a middle there's a middle finger story. Hmm. Um, I dropped a middle finger in elementary school and I had to sit out the um the Christmas day. So when we were to doing that whole Christmas day discussion, you know, the whole school was in the auditorium singing songs and shit. I was in the principal's office just kind of kind of mean stuff listening to my Listening to my peers just sing and get ready for Christmas while I'm mm. in the principal's office. Mm. Slow level tough. torture. That's a message. Yeah. Yeah. Trevor, I think you're gonna robo very soon. By the way, if you want to do. Oh wow. Um. Should I exit? Think it would. Think it could help. Maybe. Uh. I'll. I'll announce the draft if you want to reset for a second. Uh. Trev. So the final official draft. Myself. I have recess football. Uh, my holiday is Valentine's Day. Utensil, the 64-pack of crayons. Crayons. 
lunch, chicken nuggies, and spirit. I took the first day of school. Slightly illegal, but there's spirit. There's mm. spirit there. And I think if you're doing that, there's fucking spirit there. If I could tell you something, yeah. probably would have picked last day if you're going for just the draft pick. But I liked the first day of school so much too. I love the pick. Last day you want to end. First day you're excited to happen. Um, Trev, his utensil is the smell marker. Um, I'm sending a link, um, not to you people, to to our office to get these because we need them. It's not a discussion. Um, You have your lunch, fast food, maybe the biggest flex of the draft, and that's obvious. Change the draft right Uh, there. Holiday, Halloween, a spirit day, the Scholastic Book Fair. I'm I'm very happy with my draft. In recess, butts up, (laughs) a.k.a. (laughs) wall ball in some cultures. I think, you know, some people call it pickleball. I I don't know. There's, uh, you you know the game. Nobody calls it pickleball. Um, BBD, your lunch is pizza. (laughs) Your spirit day is field day. Recess, four square. Holiday, birthdays, um, you put in parentheses, your best friend's birthday, if I got to pick a specific one, and your utensil is the whiteboard marker. So that is the elementary school draft. Um, I'll bring back the chat. Um, I think I minimized them to see which ones we missed. Did I just close it? That would be such a dumb move. Um, And I think I did. So... I think Shift Command T can open that up for Wait you. Wait for I it. I don't think your first day of school yes. pick is that bad. I don't think so either. I mean, BBD. I just always kind love. Of the I don't know. I I prefer first day of school to last day. I think for draft purposes, last day would have done you more favors. But he gave but me. But I like the. I mean, you're he, damn right I about the last the day of school, day. though. Too. I mean, they're both just the energy. That you have on the first day and the last Not going to learn anything. Let's Fuck, see. Man. All right, so I'm scrolling through the chat. I'm um, seeing some some spirit days, crazy hat day. Um, James in the chat. James, he, he texted, um, and he reminded that they used to um, – they used to give the lunch schedule, so there was one item, and you, yeah. as a parent, you were supposed to decide if your kid was going to play that game or not. Um, God, there's so much in here. Um, People saying first day's not a spirit day. I don't think the, any of us really took spirit days. It's kind oh, of we not. we use them all for for I think trick. Otherwise, answers. I was going like I was going like sports jersey day. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. People asking something about coffee cake and the LAUSD. I didn't ever went to the LAUSD. That's I think that's the problem. I didn't get any of that coffee cake. Knockout for recess. Yeah, that was that was, that was a good my time. That was my fourth on the board. That was a sneaky sneaky good one. Tag. I mean, an OG Freestyle, game. Kickball. OG game. A tag. Man. I wasn't a tag kid, but it'd be a good pick. Um, let's see, Jim, no spirit days or pick. Yeah, we kind of, we, yeah. Gentlemen. We kind of landed on that. Um, that's kind of, that's where the draft brings you sometimes. Um, yeah, Aaron, Aaron Grossman says Trev killed it. Hmm. Thank you. Um, Tom Ace. I'm happy with mine. Top notch draft. Normal dog, Trev domination. Jeez. It might have helped that we've had completely different grade school experiences. A little bit. A little bit. Um, so hey, comment uh, comment some of your elementary day stuff. Yeah. A lot of memories. I think the most shocking thing is that the Scholastic Book Fair still uses the sheet of paper that's way that's a, too thin. That's so baffling. How big of a business is the Scholastic Book Fair? It's got to be huge. Every kid rolls up with a twenty sack, bro. At least. <laughs> Scholastic net worth. So I do think, besides the book fair, they sell a bunch of books and now mm. digital stuff too. Scholastic. Of they do. Scholastic net worth as of September twentieth, twenty twenty one, one point one eight billion. Oh, need um, you. How about that? 
Let's wait till we start John Boy Kids. Good for that. Even I mean, even it's if common. you didn't end up buying stuff, I think like we played with the played with the toys and stuff a lot. Just Money got exchanged, right man. Um, even if you didn't. Plus, buy. books smell good. Like when there's a bunch of new Ooh. books in a room, it smells good. A good smell to the Scholastic Book Fair. It's a good scent. Um, yeah. What a draft. Do we do we have to do any halftime activities? Oh, really? Okay. There's no, you, you, there was no mail today. You got you got time for a couple silly stories, Trev? Do you got to go save your kids or anything? Supposed to pick up my daughter. I got a little text from Olivia. I don't know what's going on. So I might have to go. If you got, do you guys need me to fill in for the rest no, of that? No, if, if you got yeah, a dip, go. we we can we can chew on a little bit of stuff the rest oh, of the Oh, you way. know what? I'm looking. She's she's already home, so I think I'm okay. <laughs> Let me just go give a quick shout real quick. I mean, yeah, go, yeah, go. It's one of those things where it's like ask for forgiveness, not for permission. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, something like that. I don't care either way. Um, well, we'll start to lead into it, and we'll start to lead into it with DraftKings. Uh, week three of football is in the books. Time to review the game tape and get ready for week. Four with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. This is very real. If you were watching, was it Talking Baseball that came out today or Talking Yanks that came out yesterday? I was deflated that I was in New Jersey and I did not get my bets in. Uh, it was a very serious and sad emotion because I was ready to get some more winners. We've been cleaning up. Um, God, I got to get a couple more. Starting pitcher to lose and give up a homer bets And those are free money um, But if you want to bet on the football Go to DraftKings And you can get $150 instantly When you bet a dollar on any football game That's one dollar Any football game And you get 150 in free bets instantly Me and James have been betting with our free money And we've been making a lot of money Whoops Sorry about it. No, it sounds like a great deal. Bet a dollar and they give you 150 bucks. If your coffee shop told you that deal was happening, you would do it immediately. Um, but instead, this is happening at the DraftKings Sportsbook. So go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOMBOY to receive $150 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any football game. That's promo code JOMBOY this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. You must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or PA only, new customers only, minimum $5 deposit, and $1 wager required, one per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER and Indiana 1-800-9-0 with it. With it. With it. With it. With it. Do Go sprinkle some reading? cheese on Maddie's staff to win NFL it, yeah. MVP. Wow. It's gonna happen. Wow. Sprinkle time. Today, oh boy. And though the news was rather sad. Well, I just had to laugh. Well, it's six o'clock. Time for the news. A Turkish man presumed dead, presumed missing, attends search efforts for himself. Squirrel stores 42 gallons of nuts in Fargo man's Chevy Avalanche truck. Eli Manning flips double bird on Monday Night Football, and the internet loves it. Oscar Mayer offers NASA a wiener mobile to transport moon astronauts. And a man ejaculates from his anus, urinates feces for two years before seeking help. I read the news today, oh boy. Thank you, David. Do uh, any of those stories speak to you, Trev? There's a there's a clear winner there, but I think maybe we start somewhere else because I don't know if I'm ready to to tackle. You can ease in. You're right. We we should build yeah. up to uh, to that one, and let's uh, let's we'll we'll take the layup. Eli flips the double bird on Monday Night Football. Um, yeah. The Manning cast. Have you checked out the Manning cast, Trev? It's getting a ton of love. It's kind of leading into our world a little bit. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, ESPN? Maybe? John Boy fans? John Boy Media fans? Possibly. But, yeah, I think they've been doing great. I think uh, the banter between them is good. And, and the insight is there, too. Like These, these are yeah. really smart football individuals. So, if... If you're not, if if my team is playing on Monday night, 
or whenever the Manning cast is, I'm going to watch the regular broadcast. But if my team isn't playing, I'm watching that broadcast. Yeah. It, it's just, it's, it's more relaxing and, and, and more fun to follow. So I dig it a lot. I've, I've mentioned to you guys, um, I've always like, if, if I had to give a, uh, uh, sending of the great shout out, uh, like my sports world idol leading into all of this was Ryan Rossillo. I think he, he talks about sports in a very honest way. Um, you know, he, he knows his boundaries a little bit. He'll, he, he does some great deep dives, blah, blah, blah. I haven't been listening to any podcasts or anything lately because I've been, we've been doing our own stuff. And uh, about a month ago, I lost all my pairs of headphones. So I bought a new pair of real AirPods, Trev, just whatever, show. Um, bought them off former intern, now sales, Luke. And you bought his? He bought two pairs because he thought he lost his. So I was literally buying a new pair, um, and he texted me, and he's like, hey, do you want to buy these? And, you know, I'm a company, okay. company man. So, uh, but I was listening to him, and I, I was really interested to see what angle he was going to take from it because he's, a, you know, a little jaded from the ESPN days because he saw how that whole place ran and the good sides and the bad sides of it. Um, and, you know, there's obviously a star power grab with the Manning brothers that, you know, is is tough. Like, you know, because like we're saying, I, I think if baseball did this with the John Boy Media equivalent, and we kind of do it during our own live streams, but if they broadcasted us out to more people, I think people would love it. You're right. The Mannings do kill it because of, A, th they're pretty into the football. Like, they get, you know, Peyton's given some great stuff about the play calling and why would you do this, and as a quarterback, that's frustrating and blah, blah, blah. That's all good. I think the biggest thing is uh, chemistry, man. I, I think it's it's why why this company is successful. I think it's one of ESPN's misses that has kind of brought them down to the pack. Chemistry is so big in anything, whether it's sports, life, entertaining, or whatever. Um, that they're literally brothers. <laughs> like they, mm -hmm. they, they know each other's game. They know each other's boundaries. They, they can do that dance. So, uh, you know, Peyton turns it on TV mode a little bit and you know, gets the hands going and, um, but Eli's being Eli and it's great. And they got, you know, McAfee bump through Saban bump through. And I think the way you said it is perfect that you can't have that be the one, one broadcast. If that's your team, if you know, you yeah. need, you want the count on every play. You want the yardages and everything. But if you're just a fan of sports, which there's so many out there, you just want entertainment, and they're doing a they're doing a great job of that. I think it's really. I mean, obviously, there's been live streams going on for quite some time. You know, all sorts of different platforms. But when you put a show like that on ESPN, you know, football's so big such a big viewing sport for us and you put that kind of audience in front of them and people like it because it's good because it is good it's gonna it just opens everybody's eyes to it wow i bet there's other stuff like this out there and i think that people are gonna start to search that out yeah i think espn has really maybe pushed what was probably inevitable has kind of sped that track up a little bit i think that we're gonna see a bump in a lot of these different off uh live event streams because it is it's 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 fun if you say you're sitting at home by yourself and you want to watch a game but it's, you don't sit and watch a game by yourself sometimes cool most of the time not that cool but if you get people who can portray it in a way that makes you feel like you're with them watching the game i think that's really attractive to an audience it's uh and maybe the other thing at the root of it it's fun like you know at pe people when they're not at their jobs or doing whatever they like to like to enjoy themselves that's uh people need to spend more of life enjoying themselves um and eli yeah, just that's going, a great guess eli going double birds is just hilarious just shout out i always ask people that are you a thumbs out guy Ooh. or a thumbs in guy i'm a big thumbs in Thumbs out is like. <laughs> is thumbs thumbs out more is, aggressive. I think or that's more aggressive. aggressive. I think it's more aggressive. I like. 
I, I like going back and forth. Thumbs out feel or, thumbs out feels like a fight. You like really mean it. It's hard to do that one as a joke. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the other one feels more aggressive to me. Hey, the chat actually made a really good point. Sure. Um, part of like that like feeling of community is the chat. I yeah. think that's why our stuff does well because it's not just us. Like, yeah, people maybe want to come see us act stupid and and have some fun, but also the community that that we have in this chat right here is the best. It's awesome. And yeah, that's why it was you know originally when our chats were Patreon only. Um, so many of them were a part of Talking Yank shows and stuff. You know, they were they were giving us information. They were they were producers of the show, uh, basically. So thank you guys. You're the best. We've uh, we've got a couple big streams ourselves coming up. Um, I don't think they're putting it on ESPN two, so I would just come check out the YouTube. But we'll see. Um, our price demands I think are lower than paying any lies. Um, hmm. Well, if we're on the Dan Clark scale, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worth a zillion dollars. You are worth a zillion dollars on the Dan Clark scale. Um, let's see what else we have as we build up to our main event. Oh no, Oscar! I have a question. Sure. Turkish man, okay. looking for himself. Yeah. How does that happen? I mean, that's what we're finding out, Trev. Um, I mean, I tried to click. Ooh. There's no link on this page. So. It's linked. Oh, I just clicked it. I just clicked it as well. Click harder, okay. dude. My, my bad. I had to click <laughs> twice. <laughs> um, so I'll say this, Trev. Part of this segment is also kind of critiquing writers. Um, and the first sentence is, do you feel lost from time to time? And I hate that. Um, I don't like that. Uh, Behan Matulu? Mutlu? A Turkish citizen living in northwestern Bursa, gorgeous, uh, in the Inigal district, was reported missing early tu- Tuesday after his loved ones lost touch with him for several hours. Interested in that. Uh, the man, after meeting his friends, went in the forest while he was drunk, where he was. He joined a group in the area who were helping Turkish authorities find himself. Um, authorities later gave the missing man a drive home. So... This is tough. I wish we had the hours, because if this is like two hours, no texts, that feels a little tight for this. It but says we get several, right? It says several, so I just don't know where that lands. Turkey's built different. You get drunk and you want to go wander the woods? Yeah. I don't want to do that. Man, I kind of like it. He's finding himself. He's finding who's in here. At night? You don't go into the woods at night. <laughs> don't go into the woods at night. <laughs> Daytime, you want to go, you know, scavenge for some mushrooms or something. I get it, but sure. if you're gonna go to the, into the into the bush at nighttime, I don't know, man. I mean, I have no sympathy for this guy whatsoever. No sympathy, and if you're the searchers, you got to take credit for a W here. You found the guy. Yeah, you did. Right? You found him. Or he kind of found you. It says, like, if I'm that search team. If I'm that search team, I'm taking credit. Spin zone, if there was like a, um, a reward for finding him, he found himself, does he get it? Whoa. Mm-hmm. Interesting. He Is helped. that a loophole in the, in the simulation? Do we just need to go missing for a little bit? Find ourselves? I'll go missing right now. I'll what's, find you. What's the longest you've been missing for? I don't. I don't think ever. Yeah, it's tough, I think someone right? has always uh, known where I someone has always known where I am and that's that's a weird thing to think about. Yeah, you know, when you say that out loud. I mean, I, I we don't have to dig into story stories, but there's had to be nights you gotten separated from the fellas or you know. Not really, man. Okay. Has there been a time in your life that somebody has not known where you like one person not one person knows where you are. Ooh, like any part of society, like even new people. Mm. New people don't count. Okay. Yeah, I'm like not, someone that knows you knows where you are. Someone that knows me knows where I am. 
I mean, where I am is interesting. Like, I kind of got mugged in Mexico when I was away from, like, the crew. Does that, was I missing then? Kind of. They didn't know where you were during that, that window. Okay. I don't know. They knew where in the general vicinity, like, where you were right. in this city. Or yeah, whatever. like I wasn't kidnapped. And then people, were they people worried about the where day. you were? Is that the differentiator? Nobody knew anything. Yeah, people back in the day would just be gone for years at a time, and they'd show back up. Like, oh, I'm done doing what I was doing, and no one would even ask. Like, oh, what'd you do? Yeah, it was like, no, that's my business. Just doing stuff. <sighs> Drinking in Turkey. Um, yeah. Squirrel stores nuts in a guy's truck. Does that do anything for you? It's no, probably a funny picture if rats. there's a picture. Let's see. I hate squirrels. They eat my pomegranates. So. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the pictures aren't great. It, there is a nice picture at the end. It looks like all of the nuts are in a bucket. They got them out. Um, yeah, this this doesn't do much for me. They're walnuts. It's a lot of walnuts. That's a busy. That's a busy squirrel. This is Fargo, North Dakota. That's big news up there. I'll give him credit. He worked hard. Like that's all I'll say about that squirrel. The squirrel Nothing and else. the guy. I hope. What do you? Do you leave the walnuts out for the squirrel? That's like his bank. Hmm. Yeah, probably. What else are you going to do leave with them? them? Just leave them loose. I the feel side. pretty bad throwing out those. The The problem is that squirrel's got to bury those somewhere. He's got to right. get them somewhere to protect them from the cold. That's, he's like, I already got to do all the work all over again. Damn. I don't, I don't know what I'd do. I think you just leave them and say, squirrel, get to work, buddy. You got a few more weeks. <laughs> Winter's coming. Maybe put, put the nuts at, like, your neighbor who you hate's house or something. I don't know. That's tough. Guys, let's be honest. We've got one thing on our mind, and it is the Canadips story of the day. Uh, Canadips, it's CBD with BBD. Um, from California, Humboldt, they probably had Trevor Plouffe's you know, lunch lady taco stand or whatever it was. Um, only asphalt, no grass at recess. Not sure about that. And they were chewing real tobacco, and you can't have the kids doing that. Canadips is CBD. It's pouches. If you watched Weekly Dumb this week, you saw me with five in my mouth. Well, you saw Ripper with five in his mouth. Uh... Canadips is CBD. It's tobacco. It's attached to baseball. I mean, sunflower seeds. Try this out. CBD, it's versatile. It, it's effective product that still allows you to live life on the edge and enjoy filling your lower lips with Canadips. Ooh. They're offering you a fantastic offer with code John Boy 20, you get 20% off site wide. CanadipCBD.com, promo code John Boy 20, 20% off. The pouches are natural, spitless, are great to use wherever, whenever we're meant to be together. No tobacco, no nicotine, full flavor experience, my bean. Uh, and they're designed for your enjoyment. It's 20% off John Boy 20. Go check them out. Get the California roll. <laughs> Always do. CanadipCBD.com. Uh, Trev, the JJR story of the day. Man ejaculates from anus, urinates feces for two years before seeking help. Um... So a couple things I think we need to tell the people because that's a headline. This is from Newsweek. This, I read the story. This is real. Um, well, then I'll kick it to you, Trev. So where are you at? I, it's, 
it's one of those things where you read it and you what is it when you almost throw up what do you call that almost gag you gag. Almost throw gagging up. i think it, cr- it creates that it triggers that reaction the thing that i guess first came to mind was why two years yeah How do you wait so long like what are we doing for two years but then i realized there are people like that dude yeah just like yeah i can still get by i'm getting by it's a little weird maybe it'll go away the processes are all happening like they're supposed to so well not like they're no supposed but they're to, not but... no yeah i wouldn't say it's that, all baby getting D. it's all getting done i wouldn't say that <laughs> and then and then we do you want to read it? Are we going to read it? Cause I guess we can read some of it. Uh, doctors I'm curious have, about the, the ejaculation. Doctors have published a case story study, The Man 33. Okay, so in our realm. Uh, turned up for medical care after experiencing pain in one of his testicles uh, for the previous five days. So that's that's what it took. He also said he'd been passing a substantial amount of urine and sperm from his rectum over the past two years. Substantial amount. Doctors That's found important. the man's vital signs were normal. They decided to carry out further tests to see what was going on. CT scan of the pelvis revealed evidence of a gas-filled structure in the man's prostate that was connected to the rectum. This mm. is known as a fistula, an abnormal connection between two <laughs> body parts. I told parts. you. I told you. Uh, it gets worse. Uh, let's see. They're... Doctors are considering stuff. They asked the patient if he had any abnormal surgeries or trauma. He said no. After investigating more, the doctors found out the man had been in a three-week coma around two years yep. prior to the drug intoxication. He had a catheter input that they messed up. It's crossed his wires up mm. there. <laughs> what? <laughs> This guy's going to get paid. Good. Better. Actually, no. This guy (laughs) should have gotten paid after three days of this. Medical malpractice. The guy's going to get broke off. And he's a weirdo that was sperming out of his butt. That guy's going to have a lot of money. He should have done this. He should have done this the first time he shit out his dick. (laughs) Corrections between. The rectum and the urine tube are not unheard of, though they are uncommon, occurring yeah. in about one person per every 200,000. Yeah, I don't know why they... In the article, it says 0. Uh, 0.5 I did people some math per 100,000. Because that was really Can't weird. believe they didn't do one out of 200,000. Which, by two, the way, bigger years. number than I'd have thought. Like, well, that's more often than I would have guessed. Sperm yeah, me too. Th- sperm through the rectum is so rare. There are a few established cases. A substantial amount of sperm. What does that mean? <laughs> In ha- and let me ask you this. There, there are certain things you have to do to usually to get that to come out, right? Certain motions you make. Was he doing that? And then it was coming out there, or did he have to do pleasure himself a different so way or get think, pleasured a different way? You think he's burping the worm, and then at the end, it <laughs> just comes it. out of his butt. I'm, I'm asking. <laughs> That's kind know. of what I'm envisioning it, uh, right now. It's a, it's a funny It visual, is a very funny image. I, th- I think you guys would really like the comment section of this article. There's four comments. Uh, one of them is just what? Uh, one of them, this comes from the username Cumbutt. Uh, he rep- he commented gross. And uh, Is that the guy? That's his nickname. <laughs> well, he replied, he commented gross then. So I think uh, could and be. Somebody replied to him, nah, it's cool. Yeah. And then uh, life is still surprising. I don't know, man. I mean, do you think... If we went to a bar and this guy was at the bar, that we could point him out. Like if you like if we knew no. this guy's one of the people at the bar. No. Unless there was <laughs> 
<laughs> like, I don't. Do we like this poop, guy? If there was a poop stain in front, you might ask. <laughs> Is this the guy question. the chillest dude in the world? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I lean I don't, most. I chill. don't. I don't like. I don't like this guy. I don't. So that's where I'm stuck. If he got it fixed immediately, the first time either process happened. Or, you know, second time. Like, one, you t- one time, you know, flukes it. happen. But. This guy's 33. <laughs> has Since he was 31. Come. This is going to lead into bad conversations. I don't think I can talk about this anymore. I think there's, I guess where I'm tripped up is I think there's a chance I could really like this guy. Like, this guy could be so chill that he's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not in a ton of pain, but a little bit of jizz coming out my butt. <laughs> I'm not going to go to I'm doctor. Gonna, I want to go somewhere. Okay. When you got to go, when you got to go number one, you got to go pee. Yes. And you got to go and you finally get to go. Feels great. Like kind of like a, one of the better feelings when you actually finally get to like, let it right. out. Right. I assume people understand what I'm talking about. Do you think maybe he was like, this feels even better because the relief you get. Mm. It's number two. <laughs> Do you think he liked this a little bit? And then was like, dude, I think maybe I should probably you couldn't have hated it that it much. It seems like you've been leaning that he does like this. I'm not saying yeah. he didn't. Two years? You gotta like it, right? He didn't dislike he, it. He didn't hate it nearly as much as I would have thought. That's <sighs> This is just tough for me. I don't know. <sighs> <sighs> yeah. I mean, did he date in the two-year period? You think the dick shitter's dating? Yeah, no, you can't. That's that's the one thing. You might like it, but you're not going to get a date. Maybe if it's strictly just as like a friendship thing, but you're not going to get intimate. We might have to track this guy down. I don't see the word wife mentioned in the article. We might have to have Erica hunt this guy down. I don't I don't want to hunt him down. I, mm. Well, the doctors were at University of Texas. So yeah, that's so we've where, got our first lead. That's where we search first. We'll start a new podcast. I don't like this show. Finding cum I butt. Want, I don't want to be on this <laughs> show anymore. Trevor, I don't be as you speak anymore. of that, I think we are at right where we need to be. Um, can't thank you enough for filling in. Um, FaceTimed you right before this, said, can you do it? You said, absolutely not. Olivia was in the background and said, yes, he can. Um, that's not how, that's it, not went how it went down. That's not how it went down. You, she did say you look nice. She did say I look nice. Uh, you guys shuffled some kids duties for this. So thank you so much. Um, Claps for Trevor in the chat. You'll be seeing him soon. Talking baseball Friday and then in person. Probably, well, we're going to be recording Monday and then you take the big the big airplane. And then mm-hmm. uh, we'll be live streaming some wild card games, baby. It doesn't get much better than that. Um, yeah, I'll be there t- Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I don't know. Yes, I gotta sir. I got to check. So everyone go tweet at Trev. Tell him he's the best. Thank you, Trevor. We found out a lot about each other today. Um, Grew up in the streets, man. We used to lean over to get our poops out. Producer BBD on the ones and twos. The chat, we love you. Jom, we will see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Have a fantastic rest of the week. Everyone enjoy your bad day. Bye. Send it, Beavers. I don't have the the songs. All right.